Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and today on the Hermitcraft Season 4 server, I was looking out my window and I was thinking, I was dreaming, I was architecturally scheming about what past architecture might have existed on the island beyond the crops there. Now, you can't really see it from here, which is part of my goal. I like the idea that the farm extends to the horizon virtually from my window. But I know that for people approaching by sea, it can be a little bit jarring. I wanted to have something that kind of unified the architecture between kind of the farmland and the sea land. Or just the sea, as they say. You know, so if I hop into my boat here, which is facing the wrong way, of course... And I say, howdy sheep, howdy chicken, howdy octopi, howdy signal buoy. You know, we've got these these fences. And I thought, like, you know, maybe the the dwarves had built these these uh, walls here to, to keep the farmland safe from erosion. And maybe that, you know, there were humans or somebody who was working in these fields and the dwarves had some sort of alliance with them. And architecturally, I thought it would be interesting to have, like, uh, this as a military outpost here and have a tower that had like sunken in and been destroyed by a storm. Whoa, that is my boat. I need my boat. Lift shift. Please do not drop me out of the boat. Okay. Never ask left shift that. It'll do it anyway. Anyway, so I was thinking like having a military outpost like a garrison here would be possibly a little logical because you could have a, a, a signal tower or a watchtower here, and you could see pirates or attacking people from different angles. And I realized, as I look around here, you know, dwarves do not love the ocean. They do not love being in towers above ground like that. And so I started thinking, well, I want to have a structure here. Maybe what should go here is some sort of, like, load-in zone so that the dwarves can, or whoever, can get the crops loaded onto their boats and brought back to the other places. And having a, a signal tower here might be appropriate, but not necessarily, like, a watchtower. Because if I was going to have a real military outpost or a real watchtower, this, look at this. This just screams Dwarven Outpost. There is no way that they would sit on that little island and start stacking stones. Whoever they brought out to be the architect of that, as soon as he stepped foot on that island, would go, um, actually, guys, yeah, let's build our crazy awesome barracks here. You know, let's dig into stone rather than placing stone upon sand or driving it into whatever terrible foundation we could get in the sea. Like, this is the tower for us. It's got pretty much the same view for the most part. We could put a small tower in over there, and they could signal us if they saw something in the distance. But, like, yeah, this is way more dwarfish than anything that I could make on that beach there. Now, the, the idea that the dwarves might build wharves wharves that ships might dock and replenish their stocks uh, that i could see but yeah not a barracks not on that little they wouldn't build here they would build there also that that little cave looks really neat i don't think i've been in there it's funny because minecraft is all about exploration and sometimes i get so busy with my little bases and stuff like for all i know maybe there's an old dwarven barracks up here now maybe wells has been really busy dang it Okay, we're, we're going to get good at this. Okay, we're going to back up a little. And, dang it. Okay, there is a way to get into there, and I'm going to do it. Okay, we're going to come back this way. Like so. Okay, great. Now, I did bring torches. Let's go ahead and check this out real quick. Just looks like a little cave right now. But it doesn't have to just be a little cave forever, you know? Just, just oh, I don't have a shovel. I was going to get a shovel and a bucket of water when I was originally planning this. But, like, I kind of lost that when I realized that the architecture of the, the barracks being over there made no sense. But, like, 
Let's just hew out some of this. Throw in some of these. We're going to pull the torches out. And then when we come down here, I'm going to be out of ender pearls if I'm not careful. Now maybe that used to be something. Who knows? Yeah, see, little, little hints of, of the past, I think, go a long way. Dang it. Hmm. So, I don't know why they would necessarily build one there. You know, let's just, let's just leave that. It's a server. Let's let other people discover it. Although, I don't think anybody even comes out this far. I've never seen anybody in a video, like, out by boat exploring this area here. Which is crazy. We could have four hermits build bases on this island. This island is so massive. But yeah, I, I really like just seeing that regularity there. That, that definitely looks like it's a thing. So, we come back around here, though. Let's actually circumnavigate this whole island and just size it up for... I've... Have I inadvertently talked myself into building a collapsed and ruined dwarven home facing my farm? I'd like to think that I haven't, but the more I'm talking through it, like, what would a collapsed and ruined dwarven home look like? In some ways, it's easier to build one of those than a thriving dwarven home, because, like, while Wells's dwarven home is really visually impressive architecturally... It's hollow. It's, I don't know, empty. Like, you can just, there's a lack of life to it. You know, it doesn't, you don't hear the hammers clanging against the anvils. You don't hear the dwarves singing and raising their glasses. You know, he's got that tap room. Hey, octopus. Not today. He's got that tap room, and it's, it's cool. Like, I like the barrels. The barrels have a really interesting look to them that I appreciate, but they're not, no one's tapping them. No, no one's raising their glasses in song. I don't know. You know, I wonder if you can hear the anvils from the tap room. And if so, I wonder if the people at the anvils will occasionally try to hammer their metal to a rhythm that the folk above might sing their songs to it. So let's see, if we go this way far enough, we hit Mesa. So maybe you can't circumnavigate this. I was thinking this was just like a small island, but this might actually be way bigger. There's no way I could convert this entire thing into a dwarven home. This would take forever. Okay, so there, there that's the edge of civilization. I think False or Cleo might have built something there. Four cacti in a row clearly indicate the presence of an active mind. So let's go back this way real quick. Who's the guy who can conquer death? That's Joe Hills. He plays for Nashville when he plays Minecraft. That's Joe Hills. That's I am not good at boats, it turns out. So I did want to see if you can see any of that light from the back of there. I think I left one of the rearmost torches lit. But no, you can't. Okay. I was thinking maybe at night time that might look a little more interesting. But anyway. So it's pretty obvious that there is a clear opportunity here to build a few outward-facing dwarven facades or battlements that they might fire down upon people from. But, mm, I don't know. Maybe building an entire dwarven home is not a good idea at this point. Maybe I should, though, just kind of figure out what that wharf would look like. Because if you're going to have people like... Dang it, Cactus. You're not Cactus. Dang it, Octopus. Um, may Maybe just having that the wharves having some sort of storehouse for the um, for the wheat 
and having places for boats to land would be obvious. So then, like, the question is, what would the dock be made out of? If the dock was made out of wood, it would have been swept away already. But if the dock is made of stone, then there might still be pieces of it left. Um, and, you know, there's a question of how large were the barges or ships that were intended to dock there. So I think that what I want to do is head back there and start sinking the pillars that would have held the dock. I'm also wondering if maybe... Let's see. I mean, the reason that I've got it set up the way I do now is because I wanted the baseball field to look good. But I can't actually justify mentally why the dwarves would have built that, like, sewer-type area. Like, what what benefit that would have provided them. Man, reverse engineering historical architecture is more difficult than I give myself credit for. Or give it credit for. I'm always giving myself too much credit. I need to give more credit to concepts and things. But, okay. So, maybe we do build some sort of cool dwarven bar... Oh, don't want to hit that shift button. Cool dwarven barracks into here. And we get our wharf going over at near our base. On our way to the base. Gonna put something in its place. Gonna build a wharf that was built by dwarfs to hold all the... Wheat and corn. Because even though you can't grow corn in Minecraft yet today, maybe you could way back when, way back in Dwarven yesterday. I guess we're going to see. Just you and you and me. Feel free to like and comment on this video, or dislike and comment on this video, because that wasn't a great rhyme there. Okay. So, need more torches here. Let's, let's just get practical for a second. If we don't have torches here, we're going to have creepers spawning. Or whatever that guy is. Hey, what are you? Are you an eight-legged creeper? Are you a, a zombie skeleton? What are you? I've never seen you before. Why do you have so many eyes? Are they the better to see me with, my dear? Oh, no. They're just better to get stabbed at, my dear. Let's see. Oh, there's also this pit I haven't done anything with. I should probably... Oh, and there's this pit I haven't done anything with. Dang it. Okay. So let's let's look at this really logically. If we wanted to, we could justify having some sort of storehouse probably over here and having having the, the... Dang it, why does this part keep getting unlit? Having some sort of... Oh, that part's getting unlit too. Dang it. Okay, so storehouse in this area, maybe. And a little, like watching point for the ships or something like a uh a wharf masters or dock masters hut might have been at the end here so the dock master could see you know uh ships as they were approaching and check them against his records or what have you so this part is actually nice and deep here on the outside okay so let's think about this so we have, like, kind of, like, imagine a, a wide area for connecting, like, so we have storehouse, connecting road thing, dock master's hut, or whatever, and then we have, like, piers, like, stone piers jutting out into the sea. And maybe some of those should still live, or should still exist, for clarity's sake. Okay, so... I guess the first question is, how big would our would our storehouse have been? And the answer is probably at least as big as our modern barn. I mean, it shouldn't be small. I mean, this is a lot of cropland. A lot of arable land. Hmm. So, maybe we should... Oh, I don't have a shovel. Dang it, okay. Where was I? Next problem is shovel acquisition. We are going to hop in to this portal and get a shovel, and we will come back and hopefully break ground on our warehouse or storehouse. Time skip. So I have retrieved my trusty iron shovel, as well as an iron set of shears that I've used to adhere some 
uh, vines, or actually I disadhered the vines from themselves and then adhered them to some mossy stone here and here. And I came back and I started thinking about where the pier should go. Because if I'm going to have like maybe a harbor master's hut over here and a hut or a, a barn, uh, kind of like a storehouse. A storehouse is maybe the best word. So some sort of storehouse for finished wheat here. And then like piers that went out that you could deliver the stuff onto. You know, I figured, what if we plunge this into the sea? And it turns out that plunging things into the sea does not make for great footage. So a lot of underwater darkness, that sort of thing. So I went ahead and I'm going to cut that out. But what I am going to include is the continuation of this because I actually want to have this kind of not necessarily meet over here, but kind of give the sense that um, that this once was connected, right? So kind of having some stone here like so, and then kind of having it come out a little bit. Well, actually, maybe the logical way to do this, since that that kind of uh, is sunk in like that, having this sunk in the same way here. I'm going to have to move that torch. But kind of having, I keep saying kind of, kind of, mind of, find of. There, I fixed it. I'm never going to say it again. Okay, so kind of having this, dang it! So, what we will do is we will construe stone homeward in a way, or in a sense, that conveys that wheat once was carried here. So let's see, if we come this way, did we actually properly sell that? That's a piece of it, maybe. It might be a little bit low, actually. That, to me, looks too low. If you think about how high ships are, how high they ride in the water, you wouldn't necessarily want these to be this low. Let's go ahead, because this is not like a little fishing pier or a canoe dock. This is a ship dock. So we're going to go ahead and rip those up. And I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and toss... Dang it. It's going to be hard to get a foothold here, isn't it? Oh, wait, not necessarily, because we can just drop a slab there for the time being. Let's go ahead and bring this up at least two more. And that might be visible from the house, actually. That's too high. We don't want this to be visible from the house. Now, would there have been any sort of lip? Not necessarily, as I think of it. Um, because it is supposed to be a, a dock, and so it shouldn't... Well, maybe some stairs would have a little lip here. I don't want it to look too much like a road. I just want to look... Oh, it should have places that you could tie up a ship, though. Actually, those should be symmetrical, probably. And, yeah, that would, that would probably look about right there. And it wouldn't be lit, because it's, it's disused. So we'll kind of do the same here. And I like the uh, the fact that it's above the island. It gives the sense that some of this really has been eroded away. Whoops. Now, how far out? Actually, so that that seems like it's like a good distance away. So whereas this this might almost be too close to the shore here. Let's go ahead and, and retrieve these mossy bricks for a second. And we'll go ahead and chip away at some of this to give it that looking eldish feel just a bit. But I want to want to establish the baseline of what the construction looks like first to some degree. And then age it or wear it from there. So if we had... You probably wouldn't have ships docking this close, actually. But it does kind of convey... Well, actually, you would have lines running all over just in case one snapped. You'd want to have them. So you might have lines from a ship way over there that run all the way to here, just for safety's sake. Okay. So, yeah, that kind of works. And then 
that would meet up with something about here, I'm going to say. There'd probably be some sort of throughway here that would connect the storehouse and the harbor master's hut. So why don't we come over here and, and quickly look at what we do want to do with the harbor master's hut. Because, okay, he'd be... We, we would want to have it be at least the same level off the ground he has the pier. If not exactly the same level off the ground. Nobody wants to have, like... Nobody wants to go up and down steps about stuff like this. But it would probably have... The foundation for it should be large enough to accommodate, like, an office facing out this way, as well as a small cot, that sort of thing. So actually, the footprint we have here might be sufficient. But there is the question of how it is supported because it should probably actually be up on stilts, really. Like, this island supports the Harbor Master's house, but it's not built on the island. It's built on some sort of pillar that drives down into the island. So, let's see. How would this work? I think we should probably combine this with... Oh, that looks cool, actually, having those little posts there. It's like some sort of weird altar or temple or something. Not necessarily my intent, but it turned out okay. I think that I might go ahead and do some work kind of on the general details off camera and hopefully not die this time. So, time skip. So I've established kind of the core pathway here. Kind of figured out where the dock needs to be. And I've figured out that maybe I should have sections of this kind of like fallen down. Nothing so large that I can't jump across it, because I want it to be reasonably, uh, you know, navigable. But what I'm kind of establishing is a core skeleton that we will chip away at. So, we'll have the, the walkway here, and then we'll knock sections of it out in our next episode. We'll have kind of a, a place to put our storehouse back on this side. I'm feeling pretty good about all this. I hope you are too. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.